All right. Hey, we're back. We're back. Hey, it's time. It's time. We got the... Uh, man, I like the shades. Real estate happy hour going on, man. And listen, listen. The Cherry Wheat Sam Adams. If I'm going to make an endorsement right now. Really good. I, I don't even like cherries that good. much. But I like cherry Coke. So it's I like good. cherry beer. It's good. Hey, so hold on. Yacht Rock. We got the Yacht Rock going on. Everybody loves it, man. If you haven't tried it yet, you're missing out. I mean, it'll make you you're cry. Some out. of them. You're missing. So, Love it. Did you uh, play some Yacht Rock at the beach? Oh, yeah. All the time. Kids are... I don't know if they, they're they tired of it or... No, they huh. love it. The they didn't, the they didn't just love it? Yeah, guys in the office, I'm sharing it with them. Absolutely. Does it make you feel old? Nah. No, because it's, it's quality music. You know. Man, we've got... Uh, hey, Jose. Listen, we got some so we, we got some vacation highlights. Yeah, how'd that go? Uh, we're going to talk uh, about yeah. that. We're going to talk about lemon, Lemonade Stand. Lemonade oh Stand. God. Man, people have lost their minds. Unbelievable. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Uh, baby boomers won't sell their homes. We've yep. got... Uh, Wire fraud, big problem, big mm -hmm. problem. You got to listen in. Yeah, it's a no-no. Man, you guys, you, you guys got to do the right thing here. Um, what else we got? Consumer Reports, HVAC. So let's roll. Yeah, let's let's, roll. Let, let's talk about okay. it. And, and we may not get to the HVAC, but because we got so much stuff on the front end here, so I uh, uh, wanted to just talk to you, man. Hey, I talked to you a few weeks ago about flying Frontier Airlines out of Birmingham. They suck. There is no other word. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. Man, I saw a post on Facebook. Some uh, somebody was asking about Frontier. I was like, "You serious? I've, I've never." I hey, man, know. let me just tell you. This I was flying from here to Portland, Oregon. Flew from Deer to Denver. That's three and a half hours. Then another two hours. The seats don't recline. Wow. Don't even recline. And then they're about as thin as a piece of paper. Jeez. And then I mean, if you're already you know fired up. Literally, ladies coming down asking, like, first of all, she's asking if you want food, but then it's like $9 for this, $8 for that. I mean, I'm telling you, it was awful. 50 cents to use the I restroom. now know why. Hey, I thought you were going to have to deposit a quarter. The guy next to me even said it. Quarter per flush. Absolutely. And then, then we're delayed. Uh, and by the way, here's what was really funny, was uh, we saw this one flight attendant. I mean, come on. Now, if I'm flying an airline and I'm about to crash... I don't want to see nothing wrong with tattoos. I'm not saying it. But I don't want to see Tweety Bird popping out right here and here on my airline. I'm just saying. It sounds like she might have she might have been I mean, I'm just telling you. No, no, I'm just saying she that I to hey, on you. I'm just telling you. I got oh. what I paid for though. $150. Not not for that. I mean for the airline. Big baller right. here. Man, I tell you, listen. Uh a little bit little highlights from last week, okay? So we went down to the beach, right? Uh, Where was that? Rosemary Seacrest. 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 Now, if anybody's familiar with 30A, I know this is. Uh, hey, Melissa. I know this is uh, famous, right? Or, or or trendy, right? Trendy, whatever the word. It's trendy. 30A. It's weird. It's, it's a bunch of houses that are not on the beach. So you have like a little walk to the beach, or you, you don't have a view of the beach, which was kind of tough. We know for it's us. over there. Yeah, it was kind of tough for us. Because you don't wake up and have a cup of coffee, sit on the back. Oh, it's beautiful. And, ha and, and look at the beach. So What are you looking at? It's a little weird. They, you know, it's really nice. It's a nice area. Okay, don't All get right. me wrong. But it's just hey, a Carrie. little different than, you know, having a cup of coffee, looking at the Yeah, so you're looking the at the guy jump. mowing the grass? No, actually, we we, we were on the pool. So we oh, that's just, good. We kind of saw the a pool house and that's some good. other houses. It Absolutely. Was, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, yeah Michael Bruno in yeah, the house. Yeah, Bruno's in. Uh, man, lemonade stand. Did you hear this story? I can't believe it. It is getting ridiculous. If you didn't know, what's happening around the country is that these well, you have to think that adults are calling into the cities to the police because children have the audacity somebody to is set reporting. up a table and have a lemonade stand. Somebody's reporting lemonade stands. What have we gotten to? How much money are they really raising that they're threatening? Children you or whatever you got going on, where you got to call and report, and I think these fines are like three hundred to five hundred bucks. It's expensive, but Wait, why do you even have to have a permit for a lemonade? Stand? They're selling lemonade for God's sakes. There's at, nothing wrong at with lemonade. Fifty cents a pop. That's right. How much rev? Hey, I'm just telling you. If you're listen, it's w w the world's coming to an end. If this one, but this has a good ending, doesn't it? Yeah, it what? does. Who, what happened? who was it stepped in? Country Time Country Lemonade. Country Time Lemonade stepped in. They, they came up with an account with $60,000 in it to pay these fines. I think, you, how do you submit? You submit, you submit the submit it. You, parents have to submit an image of the child's fine or the permit that they actually buy. So uh -huh. you can go ahead and get one. And then they want a description in the words of the child 
why the lemonade and stand's important to them, and they'll reimburse the full price of that. But here's where crazy. this is the nuttiest thing, and this is why I love it when capitalism and marketing works. So what they did was they sent a video about this, and they said for every retweet we get, we will donate one dollar more to the fund. And as of Tuesday, they had ninety three thousand. That's awesome. More retweets. Well, Bruno said, what if they start doing mortgages? I'm going to find the lemonade stands, <laughs> and I'm going to get some cups that have my no phone number on there. So we can, we can I can piggyback off of that illegal business to get some marketing. That That's correct. And I quite mean, frankly, some of the kids, they have common sense. Because it's sense. offensive. It's offensive. That's it's right. Offensive. Oh, the koozie. Where's the koozie? I know. The Trey Fava koozie. Oh, uh, man. Is he is he ordering more? He's got to be. I mean. I keep taking them. He's he probably has I put it on Ben's credit card if I were him. Man, what's next? Credit file. Protect your credit file. Huh? A absolutely. Now, in case anybody didn't know, everybody, we've talked about credit, the importance of protecting that credit report for so many reasons, because your credit report is so vital to the uh, mortgage process, but also your homeowner's insurance and just a myriad of other things. And so many people don't know what's on their credit report. You know, I would say go to... Uh, FreeCreditReport.com. Annual Credit Report. Or annual Not credit, free. AnnualCreditReport.com. Um, credit Karma. I know I don't love their scoring models because they're different than ours. That's fine, though. Anything that will help you at least monitor what's on your yes, credit. Sir. you got to do that. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, what, what Donald Trump signed a bill, it was called the Economic Growth Regulatory and Consumer Protection Act on May 24th. And so this summer, starting this summer, you're going to be able to freeze and what we call thaw your credit file with each of the bureaus free of charge. Before now, it's cost about $10. Yeah, Brian, uh, come on in. Yeah, and I think he's already got his computer. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so you're going to be able to freeze and thaw that credit file. Now, uh, the other thing that's really important, and I've been thinking about this for a while. I mean, you have kids too, is that uh, parents are also going to have the ability to freeze a child's credit even if they don't have a credit file on yeah. with the bureaus. I thought that was interesting. They, they said to uh, create a credit file to freeze it, right? Yes, because what's happening is is that if you if if for some reason somebody could actually establish create credit one and, and create one. It. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, this was vital. They could steal their identity and start making uh, or establishing credit with that stolen identity of a, of a 16-year-old, let's say, before There's no they question. even... This is real important because I think – because what was happening – remember, this database, these Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, all of them, it's kind of dirty what they've done. They've built a dossier to use the Trump lingo to Russia thing. Uh, they built a dossier on you, and guess what permission you gave them? None. Yeah. You never per gave permission to do it. So Congress made the right decision here, and what they did was they, they said basically said it's not especially fair to these children who can't even take out credit. That's yeah. what I love. I said the, the fact that some kids have credit at that age. Yeah. Like, what were they doing? Yeah, and you've got, and you, I mean, because you, you have to be 18 or 19 to even get a credit card. I think most of them are 19 years old. Yeah, right? in fact, yeah. in fact, you have to, your, your, I believe federal law requires them to, as long as credit, or they have nothing negative against them, to give them a credit card in the last, maybe your junior or senior year now. It's a law because what was happening was kids were coming out and nothing. Yeah. Now, the credit line's a different story. Kimberly, Be well, it's Benefield. How are you? She's got Dolly Parton hair, by the way. I love it. Love it. I love Dolly. Oh, uh, I mean, who doesn't love her? But anyway, I haven't seen Kimberly in a while. Absolutely. Good to see you. One thing that I want to stress here is that if you're using uh, any of these protection services, like LifeLock, those type of things, they're not really protecting you. They're notifying you when there is a problem, and sure, they'll come in with some insurances and all that. The only true way to stop people from opening lines of credit. If David pulls your credit and you're trying to get a mortgage, he is going to be unable to do so if it's frozen. Yes. It's going to be impossible. Unlike with LifeLock, he could still do it, but... Yeah, yeah if it's frozen, then you're going to have to call and, and get it unfrozen, and then I have to call my bureau and tell them to update it after you've unfrozen your report. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, a little bit of a hassle, not really that big of a deal on my end, but Alvin Jefferson, um, how are you, sir? You know, I Flag usually, day. I usually I saw your tell post. people to to check in on their own personal credit at least once every twelve months. Once every six months would be great. Just 
So you can see what's being reported. You can see what's on there. I know a lot of credit cards, a lot of bank accounts now. Have yeah, credit feature, Karma, I like Credit um, Karma. Mint is, an, is, mm -hmm. is one that I use that, that tracks everything. It's got credit card balances, it's got loan balances, it's got uh, 401k, you know, checking savings accounts. So it's got everything in there. And it also has a feature that'll let you check your credit report and, and things like and that. And it's fairly cumbersome, let's be real. I mean, if you're if you're opening a lot of lines of credit, it's gonna be tough because you're gonna have to thaw, yeah. unthaw. Uh, and, and, and here I'm not talking about using these services to monitor your score. Okay. That's right. The score is great, but it, it really doesn't matter what score you're getting from those consumer services. I'm 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 only bringing this up to say what is on your report, what is in there, what's reporting, what trade lines are on there, are there any new credit lines getting opened? What are the balances? Are there collections? Things like that. Well, absolutely, and I, I you know it's one of those things where. Um, it's just nice that they, they're finally coming around because it was to me it's just something wrong with the idea that they can build a dossier and by the way become a gazillion dollar company off of information you never gave them permission to collect. Man, you talk about a, a monopoly. These uh, these uh, credit credit companies. Absolutely, and we got to find the, it. And the, the good news ones. is the banks and everybody are vigorously trying to find new ways in which to verify your credit yeah. worthiness. Yeah. And I think we're going to see some uh, new things come down the pipe. Now, next thing, d did you know, and the, by the way, the federal government doesn't really want you to know that if you have an FHA mortgage, if you've taken one out since 1983, a HUD FHA mm -hmm. that had upfront mortgage insurance, you may be owed a refund from the federal government. Now, one of the big problems I have is they're not telling people proactively because they say, well, we don't know where they are. Well, they're not trying to find where you are. Now, these are the same people that have access to your tax returns. Now, what are, what are these refunds for? These are for stuff that was paid up front PMI, and you can explain about that. Uh, you, you paid a lump sum. Yeah, you always pay a lump sum up front uh, of, of mortgage insurance on an FHA loan, and you also pay monthly. Um, was there excess here, you think? Now... Typically, when you refinance it, it's um, there, there's a portion of that up front that is is refundable, but that's, to my understanding, in a refinance situation, and that's usually I think it diminishes after six or seven years goes away. It's usually in the first you know two, three, four years where you get a decent amount yeah. back. You get a credit back for right. part of that up front. Well, and and what ends up happening here is that you you, you could never have defaulted. And well, here's what's really funny: they put a statute of limitations. They owe you the money. Don't tell you. And they put a six-year statute of limitations. Now, that's what I call so just taking care of daddy. That's right. <laughs> no hey, one will know. ever know. And I look here. I look for everybody I know, but I, it's hard to find somebody I know specifically. So you look for them? I did. I, they didn't owe me any money? I did, but I took your money. God. I put my address. Man. Now, I'll tell you this. You know, FHA might be giving them a hard time, but some of these loans, I mean, you know, they're, they're leaning on credit. They're, they're, they allow some lower credit scores. The fees are higher, but they do allow home ownership. I don't think they're quite as um, competitive. Uh, uh, no, predatory. Pre okay. That's right, because they're, they're going to have certain stop gaps not, in place. They're not near as predatory Absolutely. as we've we've seen in the past. I mean, the fees are higher, but they do allow you to borrow more money. So, well, well, you know, one thing we're going to link down below a link after we get done here, uh, a link to the website, just go on and check. In fact, some of the loan officers here, if you know anybody that got one, just put some names in there. It's interesting. You can go and tell them the state, and they'll tell you if you proactively go get it. But it really just chaps me that they would not tell you and then go, hey, six years. Sorry, our money now. Right, right. Uh, well, listen, interest rates this week, um, average on a 30-year fixed, uh, Freddie Mac uh, Mortgage Market Survey is the website that I'm looking at here. Um, is 4.62% on a 30-year mortgage. On a 15 is 4.07%. Oh, seven? Um, what in the world does that mean? Well, they just average it. Oh, They average, average. it over. Uh, I got to uh, say, because yeah, yeah. y'all use all these terms that, you know, the rest of us need to, like, 4.07. Yeah, yeah. Just that's, give me four. That's not a real rate. But that, that's just an average on, on rates that are delivered, okay? Um, it's funny. I did see, when I was reading the Lemonade Stand article Mark today, Wood. I saw a... Uh, an ad from Lending Tree, and the rates were ridiculous. And I was like, oh, Man. oh yeah. Remember, no we've talked delivered. about what do we talk about? They're Lending Tree and that one right with the what about the ones with a rocket, right? A lot of it's teasers, yeah. Same thing, same thing. They want to get the phones to ring, and then absolutely, uh, as soon as you call, well, 
Actually, if you submit your information, you're going to get blown up. You are. You are. You're going to get blown up by multiple people. Yeah. Uh, you know. So, so locals always better. I mean, by far. It's not yeah, even and, close. And, and, and you know, the mortgage business is competitive. Okay, it's not like uh, it's not like they have hey, any, any secret uh, link to money. They don't have a secret link to Wall no, Street that's to right. where they can deliver and, these. Uh, unbelievably lower rates. And I can tell else. you, when I was a closing attorney, it was harder to deal because they didn't understand local custom. When I'm talking about local custom, I mean, who pays for what? What gets recorded? In fact, I had the one that has a rocket, without naming names, one time since I've been in re practicing real estate in the last 12 years, tell me, uh, well, we're gonna, where are we going to put the deed of trust? There's only one problem here. We're not a deed of trust state. We are a mortgage state. If he wants to go to Mississippi, I guess he can yeah, do that. Yeah. But the very fact that he doesn't know the bare bones tells yeah, me everything. And those are all, you know, those are problems that you run into all the time. You know, we've got escrow states uh, in other parts of the country that do things completely differently. Uh, we're we're an attorney state here, so we absolutely everybody comes together, sure. sits around the table. That people think we're weird for doing hey, that. Hey, we're, we're very hospitable in Alabama. But look, we if, share. If you deal with a local lender, we know how things are done here. Um, yeah, absolutely. Everybody's got to be competitive. It's a competitive game. This and this year, man, this year has been super competitive. A lot of people uh, really getting aggressive on the interest rates because rates are rising. Well, so when we talk right. to somebody and I tell them that the interest rate's four point seven five, obviously they don't want to believe that. So what do you want to do? They want to shop it. They want to call somebody else. They want to. They want to see what's going on. So all of that stuff is. Let me say this: I have been working with y'all since two thousand, early two thousand seven. I'm not just David. I mean, I've worked with Mortgage Bank for a long time. The biggest effort, sure, you can get a rate that's the same from a lot of things. The question is, are you going to actually be able to close the loan? This is not a pitch for them, by the way. This is talking about when you're talking about these guys from out of state versus the guys locally. Here's the thing: we have we as agents and you as a consumer live amongst these people, right? Yeah. If you don't do your job, word of mouth spreads, you don't close. It gets to be that big of a deal because you have movers lined up. You have all this stuff yeah, down the line. you got all this stuff going on, and you don't Absolutely. know there's a problem until it's too late. You know, until it's a week before closing, and then the loan officer says, I missed something, or something's gone wrong, or underwriting came back with this, or mortgage insurance company has a problem with this, and then all of a sudden, i got to call the movers. Now the kids are upset. Now, you know, how do I move my money around? Absolutely. I mean, there, there's just so many things that can happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and we take liability. The problem is you don't find out there's a problem until it's too late. You talk about taking with responsibility. Of, with a lot of other mortgage companies. The right? Rockets and these other mortgage issues, they never take. You talk about taking responsibility. That's important, too. I want my loan officer, whoever it is locally, to go, yeah, I'm going to take the burden on yeah, myself. Yeah, they got to take responsibility. Say, I'm getting this done. It may be the underwriter, but I don't give two hoots. Either does my yeah. client. Yeah. So that's one good reason. Hey, anything, Abby, how are you? If anything happens, it's my fault. Hey, and we got to fix that it. That is right? great. Your whole family told me that, right? It's your fault if it's. it's oh, uh, yeah. That's right. That's so, not only at work, huh? Oh, so uh, no. It's oh. not home. Oh, uh, good stuff. All right, so baby boomers, huh? What are we, uh, we yeah. Are we, There's a story, you know, out of CBS Market Watch, uh, dot com which I check into occasionally. You know, of course, everybody knows I like the stock market. By the way, if you were listening to my stock picks... Hey, Albie. If you were listening to my stock picks, Carvana, you'd have made money. WWE, whoa, you doubled. Uh, so I got Carvana there. RCL's and then, doing hey, good again. Coming back. It went down for no reason. So I guess I missed, but I'm coming back. So anyway, let's talk about the story from CBS Market Watch that talked about why we're finding that baby boomers are causing fluctuations in the inventory. And if everybody knows, it was one of the biggest they generations go, we huh? had. They won't let them go. They're not, they're not getting rid of their houses. Yeah. And what this article talks about is they found that, uh, well, they took a survey uh, and found 85% of all baby boomers had no plan to move anytime soon. Whereas 59% of millennials did plan. The only problem is, is that millennials want to go somewhere. And they typically want to go into the bigger houses. Man, and I tell you, right now we have a uh, an inventory problem that's kind of got the market right. locked up. You know, it's kind of like a traffic jam, right? And as soon as that one lane lets go, everything everything moves, right? And that's what's yep. going to happen. We're going to start getting some houses on the market. We're going to start getting some people to list their houses, and then this whole thing's going to unlock, and it's going to be it's going to be crazy. 
for a little while. Well, one reason is these these folks, and we're going to go into three reasons why they're not moving, but they're not moving. It's, it's causing an inventory crunch, but at the same time, they don't want to go be buying into a high price, low inventory environment that we're in. So they don't want to be the victim, right? They're going to get a lot for their house, technically. Now, is that because they're they're buying down? Well, they, they typically at age 70 have typically in the past, and all the projections were that they would be buying down and they they're not because the the higher price range up over four five six hundred thousand that we're not having the inventory problems there correct but what what's happening is and one of the reasons and it just takes us right into why is this happening is that these folks are working longer and they're working that first of all we've talked about the savings rate in america is abysmal yeah um, that is it that i mean say so there you look, go they're, they're buying homes at 93 and 92 they're normally gone Listen, and what he just said was they are staying in the homes longer, right? Because they're not saving money. They're not saving money. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You said they're working longer. They're working longer because they have to work longer because they're not saving. We've talked about saving money and living on a budget and, you know. Think about what the Labor Department said. It said that Americans over 65 are the fastest growing segment of the American workforce. I had no idea that that was over. It's the fastest growing segment. Overall, the workforce is forecasted to increase over the next six years at a 5% rate. In other words, the general workforce is going to grow at 5%. Over 65 growth rate, 55%, which means people haven't saved enough money. they got to stay working. Uh, and this should be a wake-up call to our generation, uh, to, the, yeah. to the Gen X, Gen Y. And it's, we, we talked about it being a lack of savings, but also a lack of health problems. They're, they're able to work. They don't have no money. Yeah. They're living on love. And they're living longer. Living longer. And, and so that's why their their retirement funds are not lasting long enough. That's why they're needing to work longer, right? Absolutely. I mean, because, you know, what's funny is as I get older, everybody looks younger at 65. Right? right? I mean, yeah. I'm like, dude, they look young yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, when you when you were 30, you're like, damn, yeah. 65 old, huh? Yeah. I mean, wait, you're, you're 48, so uh, yeah. I'll say uh, not, uh, yet. not yet. Uh, the other reason is they're they're they are starting to downsize instead of seventy. They're they're going because remember the oldest, the oldest baby boomer is about seventy two now, right? So in their early eighties is when most folks are losing their capacity for autonomous living, and so at age eighty they're starting to downsize. Which means why is that important? If the oldest baby boomer now is seventy two, we have ten more years of them not moving yeah. on average. Yeah. And that's going to be a problem because we have neighborhoods here like uh, the, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Greystone over here, okay. right? Yeah. right? Yeah. They have a ton of the big houses that back there that otherwise could move. But the problem is we don't have builders that are replacing those houses. Yeah. Right? So the inventory is going to be staying the same and we're not going to be able to get them out of there. The You know, the other problem was uh, that it's going to cause inventory market shifts. Right, because where are these move up buyers going to go? And remember, that's what moves our market are move up buyers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, I mean, we need move ups always because then we boomerang back and we downsize the older folks into that and then we ship them off to the home. <laughs> uh, but they get free wine at the place right over here. But anyway, uh, anyway, anyway, I digress. And then this is the best reason, isn't it? Tell me, tell us the third reason. The third reason that uh, baby boomers are not selling the home because the kids are still in the home. You will not believe this statistic. Isn't this amazing? Read that statistic. Mitchell Miller, this is one, not you, though. One-third of adult children between 18 and 34 are living with their parents. Who are these people? It's just an unbelievable number. Isn't it? I mean, 33%. <laughs> I mean, Man. I, I love my parents. I, I don't know 34. if I want to really be living with them. They keep it Man. too hot anyway in there. But, but that, that makes it tougher to downsize and, and sell, right? Because you... You, you've got you two and, reasons, and your right? kids. And, uh, well, there's two reasons there. The, the fact is, y again, your kid's living at home for a reason. They ain't. They don't have everything. It's not that they're bad or anything, but they're just not operating at full capacity economically, right? They, they obviously have a reason they're living at home. It's not and bad. And if they're still living at home, they're probably not doing any of the savings. And, and, That's and right. Putting money away that is going to avoid the situation when they get... Correct, and so right. the, so if you were to sell, what is that? What is that parent really doing? They're putting their child into a high rent, high price, of, if they bought environment. 
So that's only hurting the child, too. So they go, you know what? We're going to wait till they're gone before and we get And they can't really afford to downsize because they still need the room because their kids are living <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, it just baffles me that a third of all kids that age. Right. Well, she, so, so you got one in Boston. Nope. So she'll be coming back, let's see, three more years. Mm -hmm. So if she's watching, Taylor, your dad will leave the light on for you. Yeah. That's the motel. And six your bro right hey, your, her brother will be waiting, too. Hey, listen, one of the biggest things that I read last week while I was out of town, wire fraud. All right, you guys really need to pay attention to this. Wire fraud is is crazy this year in the real estate business. Okay, we see it all the time. Um, it, I, obviously, I know a lot of real estate agents, so I'm probably on a lot of mailing lists. So okay. when email lists get hacked, I'll get... Uh, uh, yeah, I bet Bruno. He does. Bruno is between 18 and 34, so he is definitely... <sighs> his boxers and briefs get done by mama. His boxers and briefs are between 18 and 34. Uh, Years just old. Kidding. So, uh, wire fraud. Listen, we've got to pay attention to this. Um, in 2018, $3 billion in the first four months of 18. Uh, okay. $1 billion in nine months... Are you saying months, got parted from somebody? Yes. $3 billion was lost in, in wire fraud in the first four months of 2018. That's wild. It has really gotten big. So this is what happens. Um, these hackers will hack into email addresses. Um, yep. They know that the realtor is there. They know the realtor, yep. the mortgage, the title. Yep. Uh, they'll hack into these different, and they'll send an email to the borrower. Because they, they read through your email, obviously, to find out. Yeah. Something. With the wiring instructions. Yeah, with the wiring instructions. The borrower will not verify, call anybody, and just send the money. Yeah, it's a great business plan. Send the... Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And, it, and a lot of attorneys now have moved to requesting wires for the money instead of um, they're actually going cashier's in, checks. Absolutely. They're not proactively telling you to send. They're saying, we'll ask. Yeah, which I think we need to move back to cashier's yeah. checks. I, th I feel like it's harder to to pull off the fraud with cashier's checks, but I, you know, I'm not an expert. Oh, you know, my favorite closing as a closing attorney was when the guy walked in with like 30 grand in cash. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what do you, what do you want That's me to do perfect. with this? That's perfect. But guys, you, as a buyer, uh, you know, do, doing any of this, you need to get the wiring instructions and call. Get somebody on the phone to verify. Them. Well, you got to call the attorney. Call and the person that them. sent it to you. Like if if you get your call agent, the person you're sending the money to. That that too. I mean, call them. Verify that all this is on the legit. Because if the agent does not know, if you call the agent, and they go, I have no idea. Now you know you have a problem. Call the lender and simply ask, what are the wiring instructions? Get a copy of the wire, yeah. match them up, and you're probably going to find the thing. And by the way, when you call the police to report it, they're not going to be any help because yeah, they really don't care. This is, this is not a life lock thing where they're gonna somebody's going to fight for you until they get it back. That money is gone. Bye. Sometimes gone. I have heard a couple cases where they were able to claw it back. For the most part, it's gone. Bye, uh, So, so it's, it's, it's in your court. It's it's your money. Let's say it's fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars. You know, we see these types of amounts that are getting uh, that are getting taken, and it's real money. You know, the attorney could be more proactive in reaching out to you. Uh, the lender could could maybe hand deliver the instructions to you. But listen, it's your money. You guys have to to really. Uh, we're gonna as a lender gonna stop sending out the wiring instructions because. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us to, you know, we, we, we would rather you just call the attorney and get them yourself because that's it's just a, a big deal. Well, it is. Problem. It is. And, and you got to be real careful, especially when it comes time for money. And, you know, one thing I'll tell you now, we got this question from a viewer last a couple weeks ago, and I'll just go ahead and answer it now. They were asking about payoffs, right, because it, it relates to this wire and everything. But how much, what should my payoff amount be for, Right. Remember that an attorney has to get clean title, has to ensure to the mortgage company that they have fully executed title. So the attorneys typically will want a day or two float in there. So in other words, tomorrow is the 15th. It also is a weekend. So if I was closing tomorrow, I'd probably be asking for a payoff at minimum through the 18th, probably the 19th. So that's why a lot of people are asking, why would we make a payoff good through some date in the future? Mm -hmm. But also remember the mortgage company is going to... <laughs> I'm glad you, you – this is David Hardy yeah. in us. Uh, you like that. Yeah. Uh, so you want to make that – you will get a refund from them for any time that they haven't received. Because remember, the wire cutoffs are yeah. about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it's just – you know, these these guys are figuring out how to do this. They have figured out the business. Um, they're 
you know, intercepting email addresses. They're making up email addresses. And, uh, you, you know, you got to just pay attention to the stuff and look into it. Protect yourself. Uh, you know, take every precaution you can. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. People are losing $3 billion Absolutely. in four months. Absolutely. And by the way, just give everybody an update. We will be doing, I will be doing the show live from California next week. And then I will be doing it from Manila, Philippines. The real estate happy hour is on the road. Well, on the road. And I'm just going to be sitting, sitting back right here, here at, at, at the world headquarters. And then the following week, I will be doing the show with you live from Singapore. I'll be uh, checking up on everything Trump did for you and seeing if we can find the are you Kim meet, Jong Un spots. Are you meeting with Kim Jong Un? Yes. And I think the week after that, I'll be Woo! in. Uh, Ruby, or, Ruby will be I'll, there. I'll be in Orange Beach the hey, week after that. Hold on, but here's so the funny part. Four pa- weeks in a row. But here's the funny part. You think it's great. It'll be four in the afternoon. Hey, Ruby, what time will it be in Manila? Because we got somebody from Manila here. Uh, Ruby, what time will it be there at, if it's 4 p.m. here? What time is it there? So I need to know what time I got to get up. Uh, let's see, see if she heard us. But, yeah. hey, I'm telling you, I'm willing to do it. It's going to be Take nice. the same. 3 a.m. I'm going to be up at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. It's going to be a hoot. <laughs> oh, that'll be a great one. He'll be super talkative, I'm sure. Absolutely. That'll be, what says 3 a.m. So, Ruby. So, you get up at 2 Ru- o'clock, get some coffee. Ruby knows my schedule. Get will, an espresso. Will I be in Manila or will we be in Palawan then? Palawan. Yeah. It, Padawan. I'm, absolutely. That's We're, a Jedi. Night. It's an island right off the uh, coast there. Um, Young Padawan. Let's see. Yes. Let's see what she says. I, let's see, Harriet. Karen oh. King, how are you? Palawan, there it is. Oh, we'll be, I'll, I'll be in Palawan. Okay. I'm not so sure the cell coverage will be all that great, but Wi-Fi okay, should be so, okay. So we might have a guest uh, for that when, when Collier's at 3 a.m. in Palawan. Yeah, that's right. Whatever that is. Yeah. So I well, have a guest that week. Well, next week we'll definitely so see tuned. you. I will be, hey, by the way, next Friday, I will be, I'm probably going to be able to walk around and show you VidCon, which is YouTube's largest conference, be able to show you some what's going on there and 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 how it's uh, man, it'll blow your mind how folks are making money in the YouTube industry. Yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be we'll probably be featured there. Yeah, it'll be a few years, but uh, you know, we'll be there. Uh, yeah, I mean this will be huge. I mean, let's talk about next week, but maybe not. Not next oh, week. Okay. It'll be next year. All right. Anyway, okay. well, we uh, love all of you and thank you for tuning in next uh, Thursday. More good information, man. Same time, same place. Well, for him. All right, we'll see you next week. See you guys. See you later.